Today I wanted to do a quick update on my hives and answer the most frequently asked question, what happens to the bee in the winter? So right now, um, these are my two uh, bee colonies uh, set up for the winter. I have another video that explains uh, my setup. Uh, I'll go through it at the end of this video again. But uh, one thing you'll, that we'll see a lot in the winter is this. And this is a dead bee and uh, there's some over there you know there's some over there you know they will come out and fly and then just have a hard landing and die in the snow now there's a few things uh, that uh, a colony will do during the winter and one of them is you know that the bee population will go down significantly from about 60,000 bees in a healthy colony during the summer to between you no know, as low as 5,000 sometimes you know five to ten thousand uh, during the winter so if you do the math uh, in terms of how long is the winter over here you'd be about uh, you'd expect about 150 to 200 bees per day dying from each of these colonies so what we see here is uh, the result of that you know it, this can be quite alarming for a new beekeeper uh, as it might give the impression that all the bees are dying and they are in fact dying but it is a natural process you know there's one right there there's actually a, quite a few here that have probably been kicked out and are just hanging by the entrance so one thing I do once in a while is uh, I come with this stick. I actually look into that hole. This is their top entrance to make sure that it's clear. And uh, you'll see bees coming out. Actually, there is one right there. You know, like uh, they'll come out and uh, you know, this one just flew away. <laughs> Uh, it might come back. They, if, when it's nice out, they might do some cleansing flight. Um, but uh, right now, my guess is any bees that fly out is not coming back. It's probably just going to end up dying in the snow. So a part of what I do, like I said, I keep these top entrance uh, open. Uh, once in a while, uh, I'm going to come and also have a look uh, inside over there just to make sure that um, there's not a lot of dead bees blocking the entrance you know to prevent uh, you know, the, the healthy bees to bring out the, the dead bees but also it's uh, it's for air circulation you know there's kind of a chimney effect happening here you know with some uh, air being able to come in here and in there and um, what I've noticed uh, or what I I, I always have a look out for is uh, see if I can see some moisture around the top you know and there's always some moisture and she can see the wood is uh, starting to turn black there but there is moisture around uh, this entrance and to me that uh, tells me that you know we have a colony in there that's um, still alive if I would s stop seeing dead bees and stop seeing that moisture at the top then i would be worried that the colony has collapsed during the winter um, the uh, the main purpose of the colony is to to stay alive and what they do they form a bee cluster which is like a little ball of bees and if i had to guess you know like my setup has two different hives two different uh, sorry uh, brood boxes you know so there's a box at the bottom with 10 frames and a box at the top with 10 frames. And uh, all these frames are, for the most part, filled with honey. And uh, you probably can see there's actually some bees uh, coming out over there. So it's not unusual, you know, to, to see some bee activity, you know. So what happens the right about there in the middle is where that cluster will be so the queen would be around the middle all the winter bees uh, helping her would be all around her and what they do is they 
uh, keep the queen and that cluster warm by shivering. So they use the same muscle group that is responsible for flying, but the bees have the ability to disconnect their wings and uh, shiver, you know, and get these muscles going. So it'd be what I tell people is that it's the same as uh, if you're driving a manual car and you press the clutch and you rev your engine, right? You're not going to go anywhere, but um, your engine will heat up. So that's essentially what, what they're doing. Um, that requires some energy. That's why they need to have some honey in there. And uh, they'll rotate, you know, the bees that are on the outside will at some point get to the inside of the cluster to warm up and to get some rest. So that's pretty much it for the, the, the winter uh, beekeeping. Um, there's really not, mu not, not much that I could do if something goes wrong with any of these two colonies. You know, they're essentially on their own. Um, you know, so we just have to wish them the best and uh, hope they make it to the spring. So if everything goes well, the queen will start laying her spring bees in you know, March, April. So that's it. Um, for those that haven't seen my previous video on how my uh, what's my setup for the winter, uh, it's pretty simple. So I'll go uh, quickly over it. Uh, you can see that both hives are wrapped into a foiled bubble wrap. The material is similar to what you can buy at uh, Home Depot to wrap your hot water tank, you know, to keep it more energy efficient. So there's one layer around that. The purpose of it is mostly to cut the draft, uh, but also to keep some of the heat uh, inside. I, I have a bottom board underneath the bottom brood box that um, is a screen bottom board, but it is closed for the winter, which means there's a wooden tray inside that um, prevents air from me being able to come in from the bottom of the hive. Now it's not airtight, but um, there's, there's a board that closes that entrance. I have a mouse guard that is installed uh, in the front entrance and I have an entrance reducer in front of it. The mouse guard is to prevent any mouse or other rodents to get into the comfort of a beehive. Uh, when, if you think about it, it's kind of a nice little warm spot and there's uh, tons of food in there. So if I was a mouse, I think I'd, uh, I'd try to get in there. Uh, I have two brood boxes with 20 frames and uh, each frame uh, has mostly honey. <coughs> so, sorry, mostly honey in them. At the very uh, top of the uh, second brood box, I have made a candy board, which is a mix of sugar and pollen, uh, about uh, two inches thick. Uh, it weigh about it weighs about 18 pounds. So I have another video about how I made that candy board. And the purpose of that candy board is simply to provide the bees with an, uh, a separate source of food in the event that they need it. I'm sure the bees much prefer to eat honey, but if for some reason uh, the honey is not accessible or who knows what might be going on into the colony, uh, at least right on top of them they have uh, a candy board. So that candy board is right on top of the second box. And uh, that entrance there is actually inside uh, the frame of that candy board. Right on top of it, about here, I have two inches of solid foam insulation. And the roof is on top of that. <clears throat> and that's it. That's my winter setup. I leave the snow on top. Snow is a natural, uh, you know, snow will insulate the hive as well. I know I have a piece of foam in there, so I'm not too worried about any condensation forming in the top. Uh, if there's condensation in the hive that freezes, it will likely be on the outside, you know, on the walls of the brood boxes. And uh, that's, that's okay. You know, that might provide the bees with a source of water, actually. So 
that's it that's the winter update and uh, we continue to wish them luck and uh, if there's any questions let me know thank you